Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll continue learning about pre processing in scikit-learn. In this particular video, the topic is K bean discretization. So, we'll look at the intuition behind what is discretization, what are beans, and some of the general notations that are used in binning. And finally, we'll look at a code snippet on a slide. And in the next video, we'll get into Jupyter Notebook and do the actual coding. So what is discretization? So this is a definition from sklearn. Uh, what it's telling is if you have a continuous uh, variable, then we can discretize it or cut it into small parts uh, in distinct values and uh, by method of binning, uh, similar to what we uh, use to create histograms. So each of those bins can then be used as a separate entity for uh, further processing. I hope I didn't confuse you with that, but it will get more clear as we go through the uh, next slides. Uh, what are bins? So binning is a process in which we are creating bins. So let's look at an example. Here we have on the left hand side, count of vehicles that are crossing an intersection and some at some point there are, there's no vehicle crossing the intersection sometimes there is just one vehicle and sometimes there are 11 vehicles crossing the intersection imagine if you had uh, thousands of such rows of data the yeah, one way to look at the data is by discretizing it by putting each of the data points in a bin and then looking at those bins together to by looking at a histogram or looking at this uh, distribution uh, we can get an idea of what that data looks like so that's essentially what binning is and here if we look at the notation uh, the first notation is a square bracket where square brackets are both on the left and the right side what it means is that uh, the numbers uh, listed just before and after the square brackets, those are included in the bin. So if you look at this data we have, when the bin is within square brackets for zero and two, what it means is that all the numbers, including two, uh, two and one are included. So anywhere from zero, one, two, all are included. And so that's what we have here. Now, if there are parentheses uh, instead of square brackets, then what that tells us is that the edges, these are called edges of the bin. The zero and two are the edges. So here the edges are not included in the bin. So excluding zero, we have one and it excludes two. So therefore we just have one, one in the bin. So only those data points are calculated in this bin and if the bin is such that you have a square bracket on the left hand side and a, a parenthesis on the right hand side then that zero edge is included whereas the two is not included so we have zero one one and the two is not included and vice versa if you have the square bracket on the right hand side next to two and a parenthesis near zero what it means as the zero edge is not included whereas the two is included in in a particular bin so that is the general notation for binning now when we look at k bins discretizer how does it work so here i have four uh, options on this slide so we'll go through each one by one and i'll try to make this as simple as possible to understand so the very first one it says well, we are creating four bins uh, based on this data now it uh, kbins discretizer has an option for strategy and the first strategy we will look at is uniform what that does is it divides the bins into equal parts so if we have let's say here we are dividing this data set into four equal parts we are dividing that uh, we have 11 we are dividing that 11 the max value here by 4 and we get 2.75 and thus uh, 2.75 so minus infinity so instead of zero we are saying minus infinity to 2.75 and if you look at the notation we have the square bracket on the left hand side and parenthesis on the right hand side which what it means as 
that all values up to 2.75 but not including 2.75 so we have 0 1 and 2 so those are in this bin then the next bin is 2.75 up to 5.5 but not 5.5 so here we have the value of 5 and so on for the rest of it and for the last one instead of saying 8.25 to 11 we are saying 8.25 to infinity so therefore we have the values 10 and 11 in the last bin so that's uh, the idea behind using the strategy uniform where we divide everything uh, the bins at an equal distance now the next one here in the middle we have strategy is quantile and if we arrange the data uh, th that's shown here on the left on uh, in a s uh, increasing order ascending order then uh, as you can see in red we have the median and we can get the quartiles uh, for, we can get the quartiles for this data set and based on that uh, the bins are created so we have we are going from minus one to one uh, and here we have value of zero then we are going from one to two we have value of zero one one and so two is the median so you have the first 25 percent and then uh, the top 25 percent and then middle part right here and then we have we go from two to 7.5 and so on if you have any questions on how quantile works uh, i've put a descript uh, link in the description below in a, for a video in which we discuss this in uh, quite more detail i won't go into the details here uh, and the next one is uh, k means so that's on the rightmost side here so the way the k means works is uh, it does use k means clustering algorithm to calculate the beans so nearest uh, uh bins nearest data points are put in a separate group now the before we look at the in, uh, bins here let's go and look at how it is implemented so without going into the details i just want to show you how it is implemented here so in this very first part uh we are importing uh, sklearn uh, dot cluster we are importing k means and this is the array that is uh, going to be used for discretization. So the x, x array that uh, we had on the previous slide also. Uh, the columns and bin variables are defined based on that. We are creating four bins. And then the first thing that we are doing here is creating uniform edges. And that's uh, using the minimum and maximum values in the uh, data set. So here we have min of 0 max is of 11 and that's how we get this number that's on the right hand side 0 2.75 all the way up to 11 and moving on those values are then used to create the initialization points for k-means instead of getting any random data points it is using the uh, initialization based on the uniform edges and so you take those uniform edges and add them in this way as shown here you in the first set you remove the first data point that is you are looking at points only starting from one and in the second one you remove the last one and you start from the very first zero and you add them up and divide by two uh, so you get this uh, num these numbers here and these numbers uh, can be used as seeds for initialization for k-means and after that you get these centers which is 1, 5, 11, and 10. Uh, so the algorithm then sorts them. So it uh, sorts them in the ascending order as shown here. And finally, those edges are then used to calculate the bin edges uh, as shown here. So starting from 0, 1 index, all the way up to the last index, and all indexes starting from 0 index up to last but 1 index. And you add them up, uh, divide by 2, and here you get this particular bin edges and then to those bin edges we are adding the min and max and these are the final bin edges that are created when the strategy k means is used uh, for k mean disc k bins discretization and that's exactly what we have uh, in here sorry
so that's exactly what we have here so the first bin starts from minus infinity up to three then it goes from three to up to 7.5 but not including 7.5 and so on for the rest of the data set so those are the three main strategies that you can use when uh, using k bins discretization now let's look at the code snippet on how it's implemented you start with importing numpy and then you want to import kbins discretizer from sklearn preprocessing and then you have this sample array where uh, it's a three by two array so two features so two columns for each one column for each feature and three sample data point uh, three sample rows uh, and these are the uh, strategies uniform quantile and k-means that we have uh, discussed on previous slide and then encoding is one hot uh, one hot dense and ordinal this we have discussed in one of the previous videos as well so one hot means it's either one or zero and ordinal is ordered sequence so those could be any integers and one hot dense is just uh, one hot uh, encoded in a way that it's a dense matrix and the method is similar to what we have seen previously first we initialize so here we are initializing the variable est using the kbins discretizer we put in the values and one thing to note here is that the value the uh, input for n bins number of bins this is based on the number of columns you have so it expects uh, the length of this to be equal to the length of uh, to the number of features that are in the array so in this array we have two features that is two columns and therefore we have two entries one and two and then each of those entries for each columns how many bins do you want there to be so here i've just put two bins for both of them you could put three bins for four bins um, for one and maybe two bins for other it, they can be unequal number of bins for each column so that's perfectly okay and that's really powerful when uh, kind of when it, there is a need to discretize a very large data set uh, after that we are using the dot fit on x and then dot transform so uh, that's uh, that's how the k bin discretizer works in the next video we'll look at the actual implementation and coding in jupyter notebook and look at a couple more examples I hope you uh, learned uh, something new in this video. I hope to see you all in the next video. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.